Today I will be talking about the conspiracy theories surrounding the terror attack against the United States in 2001. There is one statement that everyone can agree on. On September 11, 2001, two planes crashed into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. A short time later, both fell. Another plane was flown to the Pentagon, and a fourth crashed into a Pennsylvanian field. Nearly every other detail of the terrorist attacks, from why the towers fell, to the actual number of planes hijacked, to the blame for the events, has been heavily disputed since 2001. I will cover five main points today. What happened, conspiracy theories, evidence against the conspiracy theories, why people believe in conspiracy theories, in my opinion. 9-11 was a terrorist attack on the United States, which the 9-11 Commission concluded was perpetrated by Al-Qaeda, a global militant Islamist organization formed in the late 80s. 19 terrorists split into four groups, each containing a trained pilot, embarked on a suicide mission to hijack one commercial jet each and fly and crash them into US landmarks. American Airlines Flight 11 left Logan Airport, Boston at 8 a.m. en route to Los Angeles with 11 crew members, 76 passengers and 5 hijackers. The hijackers took over the plane and flew it into the North Tower of the World Trade Center at 8.45 a.m. United Airlines Flight 175 left Logan Airport in Boston at 8.15 a.m. en route to Los Angeles with 9 crew members, 51 passengers and 5 hijackers. The hijackers gained control and flew the plane into the World Trade Center's South Tower at 9 a.m. American Airlines Flight 77 left Washington Dulles International Airport at 8.20 a.m. en route to Los Angeles with 6 crew members, 53 passengers and 5 hijackers. The hijackers flew the plane to the Pentagon at 9.40 a.m. United Airlines Flight 93 left Newark International Airport at 8.40 a.m. on the way to San Francisco with 7 crew members, 33 passengers and 4 hijackers. When the passengers realised what was happening, they revolted against the hijackers. The plane crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania at 10 a.m. The hijackers are believed to have intended to fly the plane into the White House or U.S. Capitol building. After the events, Al-Qaeda claimed responsibility for the attacks. They are believed to have targeted the Twin Towers because they represented America's economic power, the Pentagon, military strength, and the White House or Capitol building, global political reach. Conspiracy theorists, or truthers, don't believe the official count of who is to blame. They think that the US government either made it happen, planned and executed the attacks and blamed Al-Qaeda, or let it happen, discovered what was going to happen, and either allowed it to, or actively weakened America's defences. They claim the government's motive to do this was to go to war with Middle Eastern countries like Iraq and Afghanistan for their oil, while announcing it was because said countries allowed terrorists to train there. In a 2008 global poll of 16,000 people in 17 different countries, including countries that are in North America, Asia, Europe, and Africa, Nearly half said that Al-Qaeda was responsible for the attacks, 15% said the US government, 7% said Israel, 7% said other, and a quarter said don't know. In a separate survey by Ohio University of 1,010 US adults, they found that over a third believe in conspiracy theories. Various conspiracy websites present lots of evidence that they believe prove a conspiracy. There's lots of evidence that lots of people have put on lots of websites. The following is just a sample. News1.com points out that the air defense could have shot down the planes but didn't. Witnesses reported hearing explosions in the Twin Towers before leaving. The Pentagon's impact hole was a lot smaller than the commercial jet. Flight 77 hit an area of the Pentagon vacant due to renovations. The terrorist passport somehow survived the crash. Cell phone coverage isn't as available as high as planes fly the people on flight 93 couldn't have made the phone calls but they did, and that aluminum planes couldn't punch through the solid steel twin towers. 9-11 Truth.org says the way that flight 93's debris was scattered indicates that it was shot down. The black boxes found at ground zero, the twin towers collapse site, mysteriously disappeared, and 
and in the past, countries have attacked their own citizens as an excuse for war. Since the 9-11 conspiracy theories started appearing, there have been people debunking them and setting them straight. There are also lots of these, so I won't list them all. The classic magazine Popular Mechanics explains some of the theory using their background and mechanical knowledge. They explain the claim that as the lobbies were visibly damaged before the towers collapsed, bombs must have gone up on the first floor by saying that burning fuel travelling down the elevator shafts would have disrupted the elevator systems and caused extensive damage to the lobbies. The claim that the burning fuel couldn't have mounted the steel and caused the building to collapse was countered by saying that for the towers to collapse, their steel frames didn't have to mount, they just had to lose some of their structural strength, and that required much less exposure to heat. This proves that a cooler kerosene fire could have caused the collapse. Another widespread claim is that a satellite-guided missile, not a plane, punched a hole in the Pentagon, because the hole was much smaller than the Boeing 757 that was supposed to have crashed into it. They countered this by saying that a crashing jet doesn't punch a cartoon-like outline of itself into a reinforced concrete building. A CBS News article on the 10th anniversary of the attacks points out that if the government had tried to pull off anything like that, it almost certainly would have been leaked. Why do people believe that the US government would purposely attack their own citizens just for a little money? One reason is money for their own pockets. There are millions of books and DVDs sold about them all over the world. Elin Schreer writes in Psychology Today, Conspiracy theories help us cope with distressing events and make sense out of them. Assure us that bad things don't just happen randomly and tell us that someone out there is accountable, however unwittingly or secretly or incomprehensibly, so it's possible to stop these people and punish them. He also notes that the sheer amount of information that gets shoved down people's throats via the media and social networks means that people are bound to find coincidences and patterns where none might exist. The mass media that covers these sorts of events also means that these conspiracy theories are widely circulated to a wide audience so more people are indoctrinated with these ideas. Before I started researching this topic and just knew the basics, I thought it was possible, or maybe even probable, that the US government had planned and implemented 9-11, or more likely just found out and let it happen. But as I began deeper and deeper into my research, however, especially after reading evidence debunking the myths and realising that the evidence against a conspiracy is much sounder and more logical than that for a conspiracy, I realised it was actually much more probable that it was just a terrorist attack and nothing more. Alex Jones, a well-known conspiracy theorist, tweeted this 30 minutes after the Boston Marathon bombings back in April 2013. This further boosts my opinion because it shows that he's saying it's a conspiracy, almost because he can. In conclusion, four planes were hijacked and crashed. People notice inconsistencies and discover a motive for the US government to go against its own people. People reason against these theories. People explain why people make these theories. I don't believe these theories. And at the end of the day, four and a half thousand lives were lost because of one group who don't like what America stands for. We can play the blame game all day long, but it doesn't bring back those innocent people to their families.